Hey, what's up entrepreneurs? Today I'm gonna be showing you my home office and how I light it from just going basically from when you cut the light on to looking like this, to looking like this for my videos and how you can do the same in your home. Let's get into it. So here we are in my home office. This is my working office. I come in here every single day and I go to work. I do my live streams in here, my talks in here, and I need to quickly convert that when it's time to do videos. So the lighting can vary at the time of day that I may be recording. So I want to show you some things that I do every single time I get ready to record a video or if I need to record in this office space. So anytime I'm coming into the home office and I'm getting ready to record a video, I want to analyze the room. And what I mean by analyze the room is I want to take a look and see where is light coming from. Now, if you notice over here in the corner, I actually have a window. Now it's nighttime now and the sun has gone down so we don't have to worry about any ambient light coming in. But in the daytime, I do. So no matter where I'm going or where I'm recording, I wanna see where is light coming from and based on the second thing, which is where am I gonna sit, where am I actually planning to do the video, it's gonna dictate do I wanna use that light source or do I wanna block it. So most of my videos are gonna be recorded over here at the desk. I just have two Ikea desks that are in like an L-shaped kind of a desk. I can move one if I need to, but most of the time they're pretty much staying in place. And now I know where I'm gonna record, I know where my light is coming in from, and so now I wanna move on to the next step in the process. This little tripod is where I'm gonna be having my specific uh, set up at and I'm going to be using that in this video. So knowing that I'm going to be sitting here, I'm going to be facing the camera this way. Now I want to see what's in the shot and what lens am I going to use to kind of get the aesthetics uh, and that's going to let me know the next step for the process. So the second part being where I'm going to place my camera because as you can see, again depending on the light source, where I'm going to be placing my camera at matters because as I've just moved around the room analyzing it and I'm sitting now where I'm going to be recording my video, I can kind of see what things would be in the shot, but I also want to look at what's the light that I do have on, what is it doing to my face? And I notice already my face is darker because I have a light up here, so the light's mostly behind me versus any light in front of me to light me. And that's important because that third piece that we're looking into now is what lens am I using? Depending on the lens that you use is going to determine how much light you need, maybe where it needs to be placed, just to be able to be as helpful as possible. Now, since I picked up this lens, the Sigma 16 millimeter lens has been my go-to lens for nearly all of my videos. And that's because it has a low aperture, or it's basically like if you think about the sensor of your camera being an eyeball, and you have the aperture blades that are kind of like a fist or like a circle around it, the lower the number is, the more that that fist kind of opens up and it lets more light onto the eye or the center of your camera so it can see more. So anything f2.8 or lower is going to let as much light as possible onto the sensor so it can see. But that does not mean that I don't need light. I do, it just means my lens will help me. Whereas if I'm using something like an F4 lens, this 10 to 18, or the kit lens, and as you zoom in and out, it's gonna get darker and darker. That's a variable aperture. So you can't just leave it at F3.5, it's the lowest that it can go. If you're zooming all the way, you know, let's say to 20, 35 millimeters or something like that, it's gonna constantly go up. So you can't set that at one number and just make it stay there. So that's why it bounces around. That's why investing in better lenses makes a difference. So literally without changing any of the settings on the camera, just putting on a different lens, you can see how much more brighter the image is from going from an F4 to an F1.4, just letting more light naturally be on the sensor. The ISO was at 1600, and now I'm gonna adjust it so that it's more properly exposed still for where I'm sitting before I actually turn on the light that I want to use. Okay, so right now I have the ISO at 400. I'm still at F1.4, and if you're not aware, then I'm at 4K, 24 frames per second. Now, the way that you wanna get into this fourth piece, which is the actual lighting setup, I want to start from the darkness and add lights on. I never wanna just 
turn everything on, all the lights on, and then try to adjust the camera settings, that's a bit backwards. And it's not gonna be super helpful for when you're trying to adjust the settings and knowing where things are, because you're not knowing where light sources are coming from, and you're not knowing what those light sources are doing to the image. That's why I said the most important things that we're starting with is analyzing the room, where's the light coming from, and then we're looking at where are we placing the camera to know where are we getting light from. So now we're gonna get into the settings and we're gonna jump over to where I have my light set up. So again, lighting still coming from the ceiling. It's gonna look all kind of weird until we adjust it. But now we're at a place where we're getting ready to turn our lights on and I'm just leaving the ceiling light on so you can actually see me. But what I wanna do is turn this ceiling light on and I'm gonna turn that light on and explain it a little bit better. But the reason why that light is not angled directly at me and I'm pointing it towards the wall is because I wanna do what's called bounce the light. So we wanna bounce that light off of the wall for me personally in my personal setup because I don't want that light directly on me. I'm already up against the wall for the most part and I don't wanna sit that light next to the door. So I'm just going to use my resources and take that same lighting, still be able to use it, but just bounce it off the wall. All right, so now we've put into practice all the things we've learned thus far. And so now we can see the light still not being directly on me, it bouncing off the wall. It's the wall is gonna act like a soft box light. And that's gonna be super helpful to me because as you can see, I'm starting to get light from over here. And you can see this side of my face is a bit darker because there is no light source here. This would be much brighter if I had, you know, lighting coming from that actual window, but we're not. And I've turned off the ceiling light just to be able to, con to see, again, starting from darkness and adding the light. With that one light on, this is what I'm getting thus far. And so, to change that ISO again. So for this particular shot, I'm at ISO 200 because I wanna be evenly exposed. I don't want the white to look like an infinity white or the tables to look like an infinity white. I still want you to be able to see some details or the walls and things like that. So the thing that I'm using for my lighting source is uh, a kit that I'll put down in below. It's the, the Viltrox VL200 light kit that comes with a remote, light stance, everything you would need to get started. And I also include the softbox lights that is condensable and removable. It'll fold down, pack down into a small little cylinder. And that's super helpful for when I'm traveling or if I wanna pack this stuff up and just really clear the room out. Uh, it's super easy just to condense down. So I'm sure you're asking like, where's the pink or the purple lightings that I would have if I'm gonna do that. We'll get into that in a minute because we're not quite done with the lights. I didn't just turn the light on. I really already have these set to a couple things. So we have what's called light temperature, which is Kelvins or measured in Kelvins. Uh, the higher this number is, the more it starts getting towards that blue light type of a daylight look. Um, and the lower this number is, the more it starts to look like living room lights, that warm tungsten type of lighting setup. I really don't want to be on either extremes. I really wanna be somewhere in the middle and someplace that's good for my skin tone. I don't want it to look too blue. I don't want it to look too orange in the room because the white balance can impact your skin tone in the way that you look, no matter you know what race you are or hue you have on your skin. So what I wanna do is use a gray card. And a gray card is going to allow me to set the white balance. Now, if you don't have one of these, but you're using you know, something in the room that you can adjust the lighting for, like an LED light, then again, play around with this. This is something that, you know, you can start at 5,000, maybe go up a little, go down a little, just kind of adjust the lighting and be sitting in the room and just see what it looks like. Is it too orange for you or is it too blue for you? For me, my sweet spot, I think, is 4,500 Kelvins. And I think for most people, that or 5,000 is a good place to start. So because this comes with a remote, I can adjust the uh, temperature of the lighting in addition to being able to adjust the brightness. I generally start around 62 to 67%. And again, for these lights I found in this space, that actually throws quite a bit of light um, and gives me more of a look that I've been kind of leaning towards lately. So if I notice that if I'm recording in the daytime, that's too bright, I'm gonna go down to maybe 52% or even 42% if it's starting to get really, really bright. Because accounting for that first metric of 
what's going on in the room, analyzing it. I'm already probably getting a lot of light from the sun, but because that'll fluctuate, cloud coverage and whatever, um, I want to have a constant light going so I can make sure I have consistent lighting through the video and it's not constantly getting bright or dark in the video. And so that can change. It just depends on, you know, where that first metric is. But for right now, we're at 62%. And if I notice that it's still a little too bright, still a little too dark, then I can always soften that so I'm not getting such harsh lighting. So if I wanted to adjust that and bring that brightness down just a little bit, then this is now at 52% right there and that softens that light considerably and that may be the look that I'm going for. So if that's what I prefer and I'm liking what I'm seeing, then I'll leave it there. So now we've gone through all these different little steps, which honestly is probably taking longer to explain than it does to actually do. But this is just a good little simple checkbox to help you go through. And if you were fine with this, then you can do that and leave the, the video like this. Maybe add a light to the right if you want a more evenly well lit shot. But I'm not trying to do that. One light tends to work for what I want to use in this particular video. But I want to show you one quick trick. So this is the Andy Cine R1 RGB light, which means it'll be like the red, blue, green, uh, red, green, blue uh, type of, of lighting. So I can get the whole color spectrum on this thing. Um, in addition to the same Kelvin's temperature from it being very, very blue at the highest numbers or, you know, kind of more orange at the lower numbers and somewhere in between the 4,500 Kelvin's and actually set the actual light to 4,500 Kelvin's. So let's say I only bought one, you know, lighting kit. I didn't want to set up the second one. Then I can use this, do a similar type of thing and bounce this light off of all of the walls and everything over there to give me some extra light to the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is turn this on, adjust the brightness so that it's not super bright, maybe about 50% and set this to also be 4,500 Kelvins and let's just see what happens. And so now all I did was set this on a little tripod, point it towards the wall and up a little bit so that at 50%, 4,500 Kelvins, so it's not uh, multiple light temperatures and it's looking and mixing lights and kind of looking a little weird, then it's giving me a little bit of extra light to just kind of feel in that side without it again being directly on me. And so this gives me um, a nice little bit of a lighting setup, nothing scientific or cinematic really, <laughs> but just something enough so I can be well lit. So let's go ahead and cut on the backlights and uh, make this a little bit more prettier. So that's pretty much it. Now you can see the different elements that have come together to analyze the room, figure out what lens you're using, where you're placing the camera, uh, where the light's coming from, and then just starting to build the light up from the dark so you know where each light source is coming from and how it's impacting you. But adding the fairy lights or and, you know the colored lights in the back, you can add an RGB light and just point it at the wall and it will start to you know change the color of the wall and so it's not a whole bunch of light strips it's very very simple it's just a light bulb and that's from ikea i'll link that stuff down below in the rgb light uh, and you can do that and really 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 add a nice changeable look without really having to do a ton if you decide you don't want it to be super moody you kind of want it to be a bright and airy kind of look you can point the lights directly at you Make sure you have softbox lights and then you're getting, you know, extremely well lit on both sides and, you know, maybe have a ton of lights on. But it's really just about a preference in how you want to light your videos. So let me know, was this video helpful for you? Would you like to see more videos like this specifically? Let me know down below. But with that, guys, a little bit of passion. I'll see you in the next video.